Hello, everybody. This is the RSN Wrestling Podcast, your news site, your news podcast here talking about wrestling, professional wrestling, WWE, ROH, TNA, Lucha Underground, etc., etc. We're here today to talk about draft, the WWE draft. All kinds of sports, all over you see drafts. NFL has a draft every year. NBA has a draft every year. It's always usually the newer stars that come up, the newer college athletes that come up into the bigger ranks and then make their mark. It's that time again. After, I'd say about, was it four years, five years? It's We're back to that. It's time to shake things up. And right now we're talking about basically the draft that's coming up and also about the previous draft that's recently happened also. Um, before talking about this draft, we also have to talk about some other stuff also. Which include this. Let me tell you guys something. So I got Rich over here, and I got Nick over here. What's up, guys? Howdy. Nick, let me tell you something. So you know what I was doing? I was sitting home one day. So I'm thinking about, okay, what am I going to do today? You know, I've done all my homework. I've done all my shit. I'm doing nothing. Summer's, you know, summer, basically, heat is hot as shit outside. And I'm thinking, what do I do? So I'm like, damn, you know. I haven't watched Lucha Underground in, like, I'd say, what, a week or two? I'm like, oh, man, you know, how am I going to watch all that? How am I going to catch up? I keep seeing stuff. So, you, you know what I do? You feel like you're back in time. Yeah, you're and I'm like, stuff. yeah, so I'm just looking. I'm like, why would I want to watch this? I keep watching up, you know, recent things, and I'm like, whoa, you know. So, what do you know what I do? I go to PWO, Pro Wrestling Opinion. Go up to all the different articles there, see of everything, all that. And specifically, I look at my, the Lucha Underground there, and... I'm looking there and I'm saying, holy shit, this happened. Oh, oh my god, that happened too. Holy shit, I gotta go watch this episode. Hey, and, Sal, can I tell you something? Yeah. I was basing the same thing as you, but really? I wasn't behind on anything. I was just wondering what's happening in the world of wrestling. I went to really? ProWrestlingOpinion.com and I was reading articles and I was like, wow, I didn't even know that happened. But that's the deal with pro wrestling opinion. You can get all your news, all your stuff. Matter of fact, let me just let the Sal, man don't, talk. Don't you know the guy who runs that website? I think I do. I, wait, wait, it's starting to ring a bell. Wait. Oh, wait, wait. I think he's oh, on the line with us. Oh, my God, he really is. It's, oh, my God, it's Nick. Nick, you got to tell us about PWO. Yes, yes, I'll be more than happy to break out the good word. Um, I do applaud your guys' uh ideas, you know, whenever you're bored and, you know, you need something to do, want to catch up on something, don't feel like actually watching the show, come to my site, ProWrestlingOpinion.com. We do segment-by-segment segment breakdown and analysis of ongoing mainstream and independent shows. We cover it all from WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor, West Coast Wrestling Connection, America's Most Like Wrestling Live, some nice stuff in there. Uh, as far as what's new on the site, we I just did an interview with uh, Dynamo Pro Wrestling. They're based out of St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I just did an interview with the media relations director, uh, Luke Roberts. He's also a ring announcer for the company. Uh, he talked to us a little bit about what it was like for the company starting from 2007 and basically just pushing hard on social media and creating a really loyal fan base down there in St. Louis and just the, the daily struggles that can come with, you know, trying to build a company. But they do 50 shows, you know, every two years. So, you know, they're, they're growing. And uh, also on the show, uh, I had the privilege of talking to the DPW heavyweight champion, uh, Dirty Jake Durden, a uh, name who, who might be synonymous with some fans for the ROH Top Prospect Tournament back in 2015. Uh, he was eliminated by Donovan Dijak, who has gone on to do really good things in the company. So he has been over in Pro Wrestling Noah. He's wrestled Takeshi Murashima. He's, he's making a name for himself out there. It's a really good interview. I really recommend you guys check it out. Um... It's right there up on the home page. Also, I have it on YouTube. And also on YouTube, you can check out some of our past classics like Rise and Fall of ECW, Rise and Fall of WCW, our latest international stars. We got 
hours worth of material. So if you got nothing better to do, or maybe you do have something better to do, forget those plans. Check us out. We're here. That's all we could say. And we're not going anywhere anytime soon. Indeed, we're not going anywhere. But also, I mean... Uh, Nowhere! Be... <laughs> Indeed. Well, uh, you know, in all honesty, though, if you go to PWO, there's some great articles there, some great reviews, all these different, um, you know, uh, the coverage on the different promotions and everything. I mean, when you actually read into those articles, you actually get interested. You actually look at it and say, wow, I should really be watching this. Matter of fact, watching TNA, I think when I read one of those articles, that's when I really got interested in watching it and trying to check it out, like, oh, you know, what's going on, especially with this recent... Uh, party program going on and all this, but I mean, go check it out for yourself. We have it on Facebook. We have a link there. It's Pro Wrestling Opinion, and give it a check and all that stuff. Um, but moving on, we got to talk about this uh, the draft, but speaking of the draft, we got to talk about past drafts. I mean, NFL, like we said before, NFL has a draft. Almost every organization, sports organization, has some kind of draft where they bring in new stars, bring in a new flavor, and that is a, a, a sort of a moving, you know, moving up from but one place only, to another. The only thing different between other sports drafts and the WWE one, there's no real like stars calling up. It's just superstars getting drafted to one show or the other. The only difference between this year's, from what I'm hearing, is they're actually going to include NXT stars. Yeah, which I mean, is gonna um, be a big. That's going to be big if. They actually do include NXT stars. Yeah, I mean, um, if you look at previous drafts, also previous drafts, they had people just randomly call up, and then you know, out of the blue, they draft them, and then they show up on Raw or SmackDown. And they and, also had the uh, surprise stars coming back. Yeah, they had people coming back. They also had uh, one time where uh, in 2000, matter of fact, it was the early 2000s. Let's go back, matter of fact, before we talk about you know NXT, the current draft, and all that. Because if you think about, uh, like, let's backtrack all the way back to the first draft where it was Vince McMahon and Ric Flair. Both of them are on either side. SmackDown was recently introduced as a second show as part of WWE's programming. They recently went public in, I believe, 1998, and then they started going on the steamrolling path as having this episodic show. And to see where SmackDown has gone, it's going leaps and bounds. I mean, at that time, it was more of like, a, a, it was more of like you know, okay, you say who you want to pick, and then I say who I want to pick kind of thing. Do you guys feel like this is going to be that kind of draft, or do you guys feel like it's going to be a, a draft like in, let's say, 2007, 8, 9, 10, where it was, okay, you know, two people fight it out, and then, you know, they, they show up like the little Titan Tron, you know, what's going to happen, and then, boom, someone pops up, and then people get shot. I, I think it's going to be a superstar from... Actually, you can't even do that, because since everyone's involved in the draft, you can't really do... A raw superstar versus a SmackDown superstar. Yeah, I feel like uh, it feels so they're like probably they, they're yeah. probably just gonna have like I'm just gonna throw like two random names. They're gonna have like Ambrose fight Rollins, and then Shane's gonna come out because he's the commissioner of SmackDown. He's gonna announce his pick. Next one, Stephanie's gonna come out and announce her pick. I don't think it's gonna be like. The superstar versus superstar from a show in a show. This is going to be fight, announce pick, fight, announce pick like that. How it was back in the early 2000s. You saying into so like uh where it was they had that list one to fifteen and then like people called out names. You're talking about that kind, right? Yeah, the original draft. I see. And what about you, Nick? What do you think? Um, I think the actual concept of the draft picks got less exciting as time went on because you could see that they're obviously trying to find a way to fill time on a marathon episode of Raw, because you remember those three-hour draft episodes that didn't really give us anything exciting. Um, and you still have to go online to get the rest of the draft. Exactly. I don't know who's eating Tic Tacs over there, but the fact that I can't get any is really depressing. <laughs> but going back to what I'm saying before, um, you know, I, th I think it. I think this kind of situation, it, it would be best to go back to the basics. Um, you know, just have the announcements throughout the night. I mean, yeah, you can have matches, but uh, I would say keep the match. You know, um, I'd say you know, because 
they they had the matches to make the I guess the draft picks feel more important, but when you really look at it, it was just only filler. So I would say have filler matches throughout the night and then have the announcements made, you know, maybe on the last hour, so you can really solidify what the brand is going to look like. And boom, you go right into SmackDown. People wondering, all right, well, what can Shane do with this band of people? So I, I think how they'll how they'll map it out is probably going to be similar to what they did with the with the match, you know, with the matches happening for draft picks and things of that nature. But because they're starting from scratch, it's a little bit hard to determine who's going to fight who. Because like you said in the first match who's going to fight each other, you know, because no one's a solidified Raw or SmackDown person. I think so, I mean, if, that's, that's... I believe they said everyone's available. Yeah, yeah. everyone Yeah, everyone is available. It's... it's. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it could be bad, but, I, I mean, I, I can't see how this could fail, but uh, I think they've been wanting to do this for a long time, and they've been waiting for the roster to get big enough. Now that they actually have the chance to do it, um, the sky's the limit. I just wonder if uh, creative themselves, if there's going to be a Raw team and a SmackDown team, or if the whole team is just going to go over, okay, this is what we're doing for Raw, and all right, this is what we're doing for SmackDown. So well, I don't know all, like, what the creative approach is going to be for that. Well, we all know where Sal's favorite person is going to be for creative, <laughs> whichever show is horrible. I hope that person is not there. I hope that person is in a ditch, dying. I hope uh, Triple H brings out his trusty little shovel and buries this person. And, I mean, um, of course so you know person, what we're talking about. Do you want that person to be with a certain redhead? Um, matter of fact, you can take the redhead and the bra- and the blackhead. What's the, whatever his name is. Uh, you know, the guy that recently got suspended. The guy, you know. Um, oh, the guy. Yeah, yeah the guy, yeah. Yeah. You could take I, all three of them. I, top I personally like. Just lift I personally them. like the dude. The dude. I mean, yeah, yeah, the dude is pretty good. What about the man? I mean, uh, let's talk about you know this uh, the card that's stacked up. Uh, Nick, I'm sure you're aware of the card, right? For uh, uh, what's it called? Battleground, right? No, actually, I have not. I have tried to stay away from uh, the spoilers, but. Oh. I mean, I, I couldn't really tell where it was going. I mean, I'm guessing some feuds are continuing, but I've managed to like steer clear of like what it's going to look like. I'm sure they were planning to tri- probably do a triple threat shield reunion kind of thing for the title. You actually hit it right the, on the nose. You actually yeah, did. You hit it right Reigns on the nose. Suspended for a month, I can't see how that's possible. They still I mean, not uh, let him do what they said. I mean, uh, when you look at uh, previous drafts, they've had people that have got suspended, and you know, stuff, things have happened. I mean, look at um, in uh, 2006. 2006 was a pretty big year. I mean, uh, in that in that specific year, you had uh, the draft happen, but it wasn't like a thing where it was like people had a podium or they picked something out of a, a you know a, a bingo hall you know little set that they had there or whatever. They just went ahead and people just came out and they said, "Oh, who's the draft pick for Raw? Oh my God, John Cena!" And then, "Oh, who's the first uh, the the last draft pick for SmackDown? Batista! Oh my God!" That, Ooh, yeah. Bautista. Bautista. But back then, it was, that was pretty. You know, that was pretty interesting when you saw those kind of things. But along the lines of that, I mean, um, there have been times where Vince has gotten pretty. You know, he's gotten behind someone. They draft them, and then there's this plan of how to uh, scale them, how to put them in feuds and everything. And he was kind of high on certain people, but then that totally just fell off. For and example, we knew who he was high on: the big yeah. brolic bodybuilder type. Uh, and matter of fact, when you start uh, uh, to reference that, 2007, the ECW champion got drafted. Bobby Lashley, who is currently their TNA World Champion. I mean, hey, just on out there, he's done much better since he left the company. I think he's done, yeah. But um, but you gotta think, like after that, what what did his career, what does his career look like? You know, it seemed like they kind of had the stars lined up for him and said, okay, you're gonna be up against this guy, this guy, this guy, and then we're gonna build you like Goldberg. And the next well, thing you know, everything just got derailed. You know why I think they weren't high on Lashley, though? And what? everyone has said this. What's one thing WWE has never had? What kind of champion? All around? No. What the race. Mean? The race. Oh, the race. Meaning he was a black champion, that's why. Ex- exactly. 
they never had a black champion. Well, let me um, draw another comparison. Look at uh, Apollo Crews, for example. Vince supposedly is very hard on him. I mean, when you think about, he started in NXT pretty early, and then compared to the other guys, he came up to the main roster pretty quickly. It seems like WWE has this kind of, um, they're kind of pushing him, you know? Um, but, like, this goes with any star, any star that they push. I mean, in your minds, do you guys feel like they're um, this draft can help certain people? Yeah, that's the... Um, I also think I it think. can hurt people, too. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, so, I, so let's talk about um, uh, how it can help and hurt people. Maybe, um, uh, well, Nick... I'm just yeah. going to throw two names out there that this could hurt. I'm just throwing two names out there. And well, it can hurt anybody. I mean, yeah. People will agree with this one, too. Enzo and Cass. If they break them up, that's gonna hurt the tag team. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, yeah, um, they they have to stick together. Um, what's it called? Cass have... is, I mean, it's hard to really go with that because you know Cass has that build of the the exact kind of guy Vince wants on top, but he's still he's still developing. He's still um. He's still... Know, the reason why I'm saying that because the only time you really saw them separate is when. Enzo broke his leg in NXT, and when Enzo got his concussion against the board villains on the main roster, that's the only time you saw Cass by himself. Yeah, and I think Cass is is good on his own, but he he really sells the duo with with Enzo, and they're just such a. I think he just a... has to work on the mic. That's it. Then he'll be the perfect guy for a singles run. I think he's already he's, kind of. The, I mean, he he's got the charisma to pull off Mike's a uh, uh, promo. It's just it, it depends on the material that he's got for it. So exactly. Sometimes it's hit or miss on his own. But with Enzo, you know, it, 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 there's an eighty percent chance. Yeah, it's an eighty percent chance that it's a much better promo. At, and and at the time where their team is just starting to get warmed up on the main roster. I don't see the point of breaking them up or even like creating doubt that. Uh, they would still be a team after the draft. I think I think where you should break up teams which should be like teams like Lucha Dragons or teams like Dudley Boys. You know, those are teams that you could yeah. break up and, you know, they Nick, could flourish on their own. Everyone wants to see uh, Bubba Ray as a as a heel. People yeah. want like, Bully Ray. As a singles heel. Like, people so want to his Bully Ray character. That's, that's kind of what, what he's want. doing right now in WWE. He's just got Devon with them. And they're not doing anything with the Dudley Boys, honestly. They're job into teams right now. Yeah. I mean, um, let's talk about the tag division, for example, right now. Do you guys well, feel like almost, uh, they'll keep it? Going back to what Nick said, though, yeah. about splitting up the Lucha Dragons, we all know you love Kalisto. Mm-hmm. So, which is true, right? You love Kalisto. We love Kalisto. I think that he's he's the next Rey Mysterio, for sure. So, because he's been on a singles run for how long when Sin Cara was injured? And look what he did. Two U.S. titles. He did it all by himself. I mean, um, So if they want to split up the Lucha Dragons, that's fine. Because Kalisto is amazing by himself, and Sin Cara is going to be injured for the rest of his career. <laughs> that's true. I mean, um, but let me ask you guys this. Do you guys feel like they're going to strip people, uh, they're going to break up tag teams in this draft? I mean, if you look at previous drafts, they've done that many times before, and many times it's failed. Both uh, where they've where they've uh, separated people, they put them in separate shows, and then next thing you know, everything just gets derailed, and they end up putting them back together out of nowhere. To a certain extent, certain teams have done well after they broke up as singles competitors from the draft. Give me an example. The APA. For JBL, I think. I mean, I mean, but uh, in those situations, you really, I mean, would you agree on me? Agree with me on this? Um, that uh, most of the like when they separate people. It usually benefits one person, not the other person. Oh, you want to? It depends an example on who from break out. Both. I mean, when you look at like the Hardys, for example, the Hardys broke up. Um, who shined more? You know, I mean, uh, of course, you know. They both equally did well. Yeah. From the breakup, the Hardys. But me and Nick were talking about this. I wasn't a fan of the whole Matt Hardy MVP storyline as single competitors. Yeah, I wasn't either. I was kind of. Nick, I love, thought, I like that. Nick thought it was great. I it was, was iffy with the whole. Long, it was great long-term storytelling. I was iffy with take, it because I'm like, rivals. really? Oh, what are you saying, Nick? You take two rivals. You just have them at a war of words. 
And then you just so much of rivals that just through the spirit of competition, you start to get a bond, and then they become a tag team. And then I believe the storyline went that uh, he used the tag team to turn on him again. And it just, you know, it re-sparked the whole feud. It's a great example of long-term storytelling because it, it takes the it takes the fan on a ride. You know, you go on an emotional low, an emotional high. You know, that that's how you do it. Um, as far as, like, what other teams could do, I mean, yeah, of course you break a team up. One guy is going to rise to the occasion and the other one's kind of going to just sell by. Um, not really sure what they're going to do with these teams, but... I. I I do think um, a big beneficial factor that the draft offers is that, you know, it's a lot easier to push one guy since it's easier to showcase him on top of the card of one show. And you don't overexpose the guy since he won't be on the other show during the week. You know, his segment will stick out a lot more. Um, I think one of the biggest stars from a draft in particular, you know, was Edge who more or less became synonymous with SmackDown. There was a time where you, you turned into SmackDown just to see what the hell he was going to do next. Yeah, I mean, um, when you look at the way this, uh, like with tag teams, either one star rises up and then another star usually doesn't have that good of a, um, a push, but then they eventually start getting up there. I mean, um, if you look at back at uh, the Dudleys, for example, Dudley in 2000, I believe 2003 or 2002, Dudley split up. Uh, Devon went to SmackDown, and Bully went to Raw. Yeah, but B- Bobby Bubba, Bubba went to um, Raw, and then it was kind of a yeah. We had the the, the Reverend Devon, and then we had the other deal there too um, with um, uh, what's his name uh, with Bubba. But Bubba usually he usually was stuck to that gimmick, whereas Devon was able to you know break out into something that was more into his line, you know. But as a result, that came out with Batista. And, you know, with Bubba, he kind of went down. And then hopefully, you know, when he went to TNA, he did something big. And, you know, he broke out and did some other stuff, too. And that made him into one of the greatest heels of all time. But, I mean, um, so we talk about pretty much tag teams. What do you guys feel about uh, uh, what you call the divas that are going on right now? One man. Yes, because right now, there's this uh, rumor right now. I mean, as far as the tag teams, they're saying that they're not going to split them up. But... What about the women's? I mean, the women's, for example, right now, you see uh, they brought back the women's title, took out the Divas title, and now there's this whole gap right now. There's been rumors that they're going to put the title on one brand, they're going to put the title on both brands. Uh, you know, How do you guys think that that's going to work? Um, I think because if you look at the main roster's number of women, I think there are like 12 or 13 women on the roster. But uh, a big a big part of it that um, is annoying me was the fact that m- the majority of the first half of the year was spent focusing on uh, Charlotte and Natalia and an endless feud <laughs> where they basically had to bring in Ric Flair and uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Bret Hart. Bret Hart to try to make it a little bit interesting and then just trying to just drag out the story. I really think they just stuck the two women together in a feud because their roadblock match was was pretty good, and you know it, it almost came to creating that magic of their original NXT match. But it's it was it was such a long dragged out feud that it it didn't help anybody, and it 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 kind of it kind of put a bad flavor on the women's division for me. But um, you know obviously other people came back, and you know now we have. New blood to um, you know uh, gush over, but oh. I think I, I still can't forgive WWE for the four freaking long months of Charlotte and Natalia in a never-ending feud. At least now they're going places with it. But my whole thing uh, with the divas, to get there. my yeah. whole thing with the divas, are there enough divas to actually do two titles? There are, think. but there are, but they they only focus on on six women right now. Yeah. Focus on so what's, the point, what's the point of even going there if you're gonna just keep the roster short? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, there's so many divas that are inactive right now. Look at uh, Paige isn't there anymore. No, Alicia, she's back. She's there. But she's like barely. Uh, she's been bitching about um, not being uh, in the ring. Uh, look at, for example, also Alicia Fox. She hasn't been, uh, you know, wrestling for a long time. Emma uh, injured. 
Emma's totally injured. You got uh, who Naomi else? Naomi injured. Tamina injured. Mm-hmm. There's such a gap. I mean, um, just right and, there. That's four divas injured. Yeah, and there's and basically ten divas and the whole roster. That's you know kind of like, what are you guys gonna do with that? You know, this is probably gonna be the NXT call up. Well, they're saying that wherever there's a gap, they're gonna put NXT there. But it's kind of like um, if you guys have experience working at like a, let's say like a corporate store, uh, Rich, you would know this. Like at CVS. Huh. Where, yeah, yeah, we you know that pretty well. We know that pretty well. I mean, there's like people, you know, there's uh, there's corp, you know, there's people that will say, oh, you're gonna get that done by this day, right? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get it, we're gonna done, we're gonna get it done. Like there's a manager that says, yeah, yeah, we'll get it done, we'll get it done. Meanwhile, Meanwhile they bring in three people from another store to do it. And, I, and the thing is, the matter of fact that that the guy saying that, oh, he'll do it, but the fact of the matter is, he's telling someone else to do it, but there's no guarantee. It's just like, remember when we do signs and like, you know, they'll say, oh, do signs, do signs. Yeah, yeah, we're going to get it done, we're going to get it done. And it doesn't get done, and they're like, oh, why don't you guys get it done? Oh, because we were overstaffed, we were understaffed, this, that, 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 that. Or not even that. You, everyone was on register, so yeah. just look at the numbers and see how much we made last night. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, it's every it's every single job pretty much where it goes like this, too. I mean, Nick, you probably had this kind of situation, too, where they put people in this position, they rush them, and then they say... Oh, you're ready. You're ready. You're ready. You're ready. And the next thing you know, when the time comes, they're not ready. They're either they flop, they don't do well. So, do you guys feel like it's the same situation where they're rushing the NXT roster too much? Because if you look at uh, the the rumored call-ups, they're saying they're saying Finn is obviously probably gonna trans is gonna go. But they've been uh, getting called up since uh, January, though. Hell, before that, even before that, they're saying that he's gonna come way before that. What, Every before week, the, yeah. Oh, Finn Balor is backstage. Finn Balor is taking pictures backstage at Raw. Yeah, it's like... So debut him already. And they're like, I mean, well, he's ready. I think we all know that he's ready. He's been but ready like, since before he even signed with NXT. Yeah, I mean, when you think of, like, for example, they're saying Nia Jax, she might be going to the main roster. Like, I can know, actually see her doing well on the main roster, though. I think it, she's, like, the perfect diva for the main roster. I feel like she is. She's, like, the next Awesome Kong, but, like, you know, are they really ready? Because if you look at um, another name, American Alpha... They're saying they're going to bring them up, but are they really ready? They're fairly new, you know? They're exactly oh, they're so a year ready. old. They're exactly a year old, but they're both... Jason they're Jordan s- is a so- collegiate wrestler, and yeah. Chai Gable is an Olympic wrestler. They're, I think they're, phenom- they're ready. Yeah. They're phenomenal. I think I think they're ready, too, but it, it comes to the question, too. Are they rushing these people too much? Are they you know, expecting too much out of the NXT talent to the point where NXT is just going to be uh, overrun and, you know taken down and, you know, raided, and then NXT just becomes this mediocre brand like ECW was or NXT was in 2010, you know, that's that's hopefully, you know, that's my fear. I don't know, if you think about it, look how successful NXT is. They're a global phenomenon. I mean, they sold out Brooklyn recently again. Just throwing it out there, they're better than Raw and SmackDown put together. They definitely are. And they're only an hour show. That's another thing. And another thing is the production, the production-wise. Let, let me emphasize, emphasize on the production. It's not stupid ass Kevin Dunn doing the You said the on. name. How dare you? I don't give a fuck. Fuck that stupid ass buck tooth wearing motherfucker. Fuck him. Because I mean, I mean honestly, this is, a, this is a Triple H product. Yeah, that's another thing. You see, that's the thing. Triple H is basically producing it. He's producing it from start to finish. He's involved in it 100%. To have someone else produce it, doing all that. I mean, you got to admit, that's something interesting. That's what makes NXT so good, right? Is because it's totally different from what Raw and SmackDown is, right? But, um, I Which mean... Is, like I said, they do all this in an hour. Yeah. One hour they get this done. It takes Raw an hour and a half to actually become good. SmackDown and, is just a lost cause. I mean, when you really think about it, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of pressure, too. I mean, with running Raw, you're dealing with sponsors, you're dealing with USA Network, you're dealing with live TV. And, you know... That's kind of like you have to be that way. That's more pressure, too. Just, I mean, I can understand that. But, um, I mean, to the point, like, do you guys feel like they're kind of rushing NXT too much, and do you think that they're going to drain NXT too much? Mm. What do you Nick. feel, Nick? What do you say, Nick? Mm. I'm not sure. I mean, it, it's... Again, we're, we're just mainly speculating on what could happen, but... Um, I think the idea is that I think we all know eventually Triple H will probably take over the 
the whole product maybe five years down the line, and he's showing you know his capabilities of what he can do with a brand like NXT, which he basically took from like a laughing stock and made it practically the ultimate alternative to WWE's main roster products. And now it's a bridge between, you know, NXT itself and the main roster. So it's in turn making the main roster better. And, you know, he, he's got like the Paul Heyman uh, ability to just constantly be able to create new stars, look out on the horizon, see who's making a name for themselves, bring them in, build them up. You know, he, it, it never stops for all the... For all the Seth Rollinses and Bray Wyatts that got called up, there came along the Sami Zayn's, and there came along, you know, the Apollo Cruises, and you know, and, and right now you got Nakamura and, and Samoa Joe lighting it up. He, it's a constant wave of new people, and it's a mix of name recognition from the indies and just natural their own developmental stars, you know, like American Alpha. Um, you got the revival in there. You know, it's it's just a it's it's a it's a mix that's never gonna fail, and I, and I especially love that he has such attention to detail in the product itself, like right down to the camera angles on the entrances. Like it it goes smoothly every single time. You know that attention to detail is, is gonna be big when he runs around one day. And honestly, I can't wait for that. But as far as what the draft could do, I mean, NXT obviously does have a big, uh, I'm not going to say a question mark, but a, a lot of eyes drawn to who can do what. But that's the thing about the draft is it's set up for some to succeed and it's set up for some to fail. And honestly, I'm a little bit scared to see who's going to end up doing what. But um, some of the other NXT acts like Enzo and Cass and Bot Villains, you know, they already have the advantage of having that intro already. Now it's just a matter of with this draft, can they stay relevant? That is true. Nick, basically, you hit it right on the head. Thank you, I try. All right, like going back to what you said. Triple H took people from other companies and brought them in and worked them perfect. Like, he brought Kenta in. Yes, changed his name to Hideo Tommy. And he did great before he got injured. He took Prince DeVitt, brought him in, changed his name to Finn Balor, and now he's the biggest thing going in NXT. Next to Shinsuke Nakamura. I mean, if uh, you really look at it, the reason why Triple H has such success with all these uh, stars that he's bringing in is because he can relate with them. He can relate with them on a, on a wrestling level, like, you know, because he was there at that point doing that. He was there at the stage, stage of his life, and he can relate with these people. So that's why they and, – and all these people, they actually have a deeper connection with him. I mean, they're saying that there's, like, a, a click backstage – and he has a full like you know, he has a full thing in, inside of that too, you know. So I mean, that's I think something that's gonna um, uh, put some kind of you know light into the um, you know the relationship that's there, you know, with all these different um, stars coming in and all that. And I think that's good for the business because you're not just gonna have another MVP or another Mr. Kennedy where they bring him in. They have this expectation of them, and the next thing you know, everything is derailed. They leave. They get into a conflict. Something happens. There's a beef, and then they just walk out the door, and then the whole plan just got derailed. WWE, what they want is consistency. They want the same stars, people that people you know that can that people can gravitate towards, and they can really relate to. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges. I think that's but this draft hopefully will bring that closer and make more of a better product. That's I think their hope right now. Um, so we talked about divas. We talked about tag teams. Uh, let me ask you guys about the titles. What do you guys feel about that? Because in pr in previous years, they've had titles jump back and forth from Raw to SmackDown, SmackDown to Raw. Uh, the the SmackDown title the SmackDown title was a WWE title. The Raw title was a World title, et cetera, et cetera. And then they had the IC title and the, you know the mid card belts. What do you guys feel is gonna happen for this this whole you know upcoming draft? Do you guys feel a will there be another World title? B, will they have the mid-card titles on the same brand? Will they be on alternate brands? And which brands do you think that are going to happen? 
or um, and C, which you know, what do you guys feel? Uh, should they have different titles for different divisions? Like, should SmackDown have their own world titles? Should, should Raw have their own world title? And you know, like for the mid card titles, I mean for the tag titles, should be the same thing. Should SmackDown have their own set? Should Raw have their own set? You know, et cetera, et cetera. What do you guys feel about that? I mean, it, it's um. It, it's a toss-up, honestly, but I think when you're, obviously, now they're making Raw and SmackDown their own individual shows, so when you have an individual show, you need individual titles. You need you need reasons for people to fight. You need reasons for guys to get over. You need reasons to have good matches. Um, titles are the foundation of storylines because they provide reasons to fight. Um and in the past, uh, I never was a fan of all the title switching because honestly, it it, it took the fun out of uh, out of the brand itself, and it, it it just made it more about the title. Um, while I'm not saying it shouldn't be about the title, you can showcase the title in a different way, um, because then once you got to the point where SmackDown was treated like you know it, you know it is the B show. Um, their world championship is not seen on the same level as the Raw championship. So even though you're calling it a world title, it doesn't really feel like a world title. It just feels like you're the best of the second place. You're, you're king of the runner-ups. You know, it, it's, it's not a title you really want to uh, show off, per se. But, I mean, it all comes down to how they're going to push this new SmackDown. The fact that it's live on Tuesday nights is going to be a, a big boost. Um, I don't think now's the time to uh, to make a new title. Uh, I think they should just keep the focus on... Because, look, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship is, is a unification title in of itself. Um, they wouldn't have put the belts together if they didn't feel one champion of one company is good enough. I mean, it, 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 it's I'm not sure if maybe they're going with the approach or where they want to create two different companies or something of that sort. But it's just more like two different TV shows. And on top of that, you, you, you need your world championship program to sell views, if they needed to sell network views, they needed to sell commercials, they needed to sell everything, merchandise. Um, you got to keep your eyes on the main event scene, and the only way you can do that is by having one consistent champion um, appear on both brands, because it, it emphasizes the importance of the world championship. It doesn't uh, take a title, another title, and devalue it. Unless they really do put SmackDown on the same level as Raw, but we all know SmackDown has been treated like the second show for so long, it's going to take uh, maybe a few years to shake that connotation. Um, but um, I think they could do it. I think they can do it. Um, do I think they should do it? I don't personally think so. I think it's a lot safer just sticking with one champion. That's just that's just how I feel. But uh, You're saying that for all can, brands? Huh? For all for all divisions, right? So for the tag titles, for the divas titles, and uh... well, no, I'm I'm just talking about the world championship. Um, if they're if you're individualizing the two shows, you need to keep certain shows um having certain championships. Um, but when it comes to tag team and 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 women's, it gets a little, you know, it gets a little confusing because it's it's not like they have a really deep roster. But at the same time, they kind of do have enough where they could fill action on both shows. But it, it's a challenge because, you know, you don't want to create two separate tag team, uh, two separate tag team championships. Even though I think I believe they did do it at one point on the draft, and it did help teams like London and Kendrick and uh, I think it was Lenskeed and Murdoch, you know, get over on their own on their own respective brands. But it's. You know, it's a little bit challenging because when you create more than one title, it, it kind of, while it creates more storyline opportunities, it, it, it devalues the original belt because basically now it's just like, oh, if I can't get the big belt, I'll just get the little belt. You know, it's it's okay. It's all good. You know, but it, sometimes it, that little belt does help someone actually become a superstar. It can. Uh, the opportunity doesn't happen as often as it probably should, though. But that's sort of his own fault for, you know, not taking advantage of opportunities that they've had in the past. Yeah, I mean, this whole draft, it, it's 
it's it's a good opportunity to just hit the rewind button and just create a brand new product with uh, you know shake and really do a really good shake up. As far as the mid card titles though, I think they should keep like the United States Championship and the uh, um, US. Intercontinental. They should keep you know one title on one show and the other title on the other show. I that mean, they should. Tag be. team and yeah. women's would be interchangeable. And you keep one world champion for the company to sell your main event program. Um, we've done this in the past, and it and, and it's just a formula that works because it's it's the best way to to book it. And it, it's I'm beneficial for everyone. Because they're going to do two world titles. I mean, uh, there's a lot. Of, uh, I mean, with your point, uh, Nick, there's a. Uh, I mean, I, some can argue that uh, that it's actually not a way because if you just have one world champion, it really is limiting the potential of the roster. Because uh, you have certain people that are good, that are the heavy, the big players, and then you have the people that are either put down, that are big players also, but then are downgraded to mid carders. Look at the stories of Cordy Rhodes and uh, Ryback. They got frustrated and left because they felt like they're not getting their opportunities. Dolph well, is did like, Ryback actually leave or no? Well, they're saying that he might have because apparently he's not signed. Well, they they were around in times where there was no draft, so they were just being underutilized on both shows. Um, now now that it gets even worse because if you're drafted on a show and not used a lot, you're not really going to be on television. Yeah, I mean that's another. I think that's another factor. I think when they're looking at doing this draft, it's not just okay what is good on TV, but also what is good for the stars as well because it's more of a personal business. I mean, if you're not happy working there. You're obviously going to leave, and I think WWE is starting to realize that if someone's not happy with the way the product is, they don't care about just being on TV. They care about actually performing. And there are some people that are saying it doesn't matter. Like, I, if I don't have to be here, I can go to Japan, I can go to ROH, I can go to different uh, promotions if I wanted to. I don't have to stay here. And that's well, the thing that they're, they're kind well, of uh, doing. A perfect example of what you just said. Look at Cody Rhodes. He leaves. He's doing everything right now. And he's doing it all on his own, and I think that's like what WWE's kind of uh, hesitant on. I mean, uh, speaking of uh, people doing it on their own, Brock Lesnar recently had his fight with uh, UFC, came back for a one-up, yeah, and that was a murder. I, I I'm so proud of Brock. Like, do you I, know I how much care. he made? They saying over 2.5 million in his purse. Just off a 15-minute fight. And here's another thing. And here's what really bothers me: How are other stars going to look at that? If you're if you're if you're a, a contracted wrestler of WWE and you're told you can't make this appearance, you can't make this appearance. But then this guy can go out and go to UFC and do a one-off fight and make this much money. Right. That's gotta make you pissed, right? Basically, going like kind of saying what you just said. <laughs> if you listen to the Art of Wrestling <laughs> podcast that Cole Cabana does, mm -hmm. with he did one with CM Punk. Mm -hmm. He Punk basically said he wants to wear. Like the UFC shorts with sponsors. Yeah. Triple H and Vince said no, because that's going to hurt the sponsors that work with WWE. Yep. Who magically comes back in to the scene? Brock Lesnar with his UFC sponsors. Jimmy Johns, yep. So Punk was basically pissed at that because that was his idea. To do the sponsors. Yeah, I mean, when uh, people get pissed now that you know, um, I mean, they're giving certain people shots and they're saying this guy deserves it when he doesn't, really, when he really doesn't, he gets suspended and then what? You know, and that's uh, that's I think a big problem right now. So I mean, um, uh, well, let's finish this off with, um, I say let's talk about one of the one last thing. What do you guys feel about the mid card titles? Do you guys feel like they are? Um, I mean, we talked about the Intercontinental U.S. titles, uh, cha you know, they're changing uh, brands and everything. Do you guys feel like they'll ever unify them? No, they can't. What do you say? They can. They really shouldn't. <laughs> they should, right? I, 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 no, I, I don't. I don't think uh, unification only works for one instance. It basically confirms that what you're doing is not working, and we need to stick this together because the only way people are gonna buy it. Um, exactly. It's it. It could be overkill when you do it too many times. True. I mean, uh, I think they're they're just trying to reach this thing of uniformity. But like with this draft, 
there's so many there's so many ways it can go. There's so many different opportunities, so much variety in the you know way they can book stuff. I mean, that's something that we're all interested in. I mean, we're in a, we're a smarter society, a smarter um, you know smarter wrestling base. We know what's going on behind the scenes. We actually are a little bit more intelligent. Um, we're the people I mean, that we're, the creative hate. <laughs> Basically, yeah, we're the smart marks that people look at. But if you look at the portion of the audience, 65% of it is all just pretty much fans like us. People that know the deal that are kind of, you know, they're not skeptic. They're not kind of like, oh, you know, this is fake. They know what's going on. They understand, and they, they have, you know, uh, right. some knowledge about what's going on. I have an idea. Before, but, we, I mean, before we close the show out, I have a question for all three of us. Where the commissioner of Raw... With the Commissioner of SmackDown, who's your number one pick for each show? Like you come out, you make the announcement. You're on Raw. You're the GM of Raw. Who's your number one pick? We'll start with you. We'll go RSN. My first pick, if I'm the yeah. GM of Raw, Seth Rollins. Rollins. So I'd say my say? for me for me I'd say my first pick. If I was Raw or SmackDown, I'd say Roman no, Reigns. No, you're Raw. Raw, Roman Reigns. Nick. Nick. Nick, what do you say? I would probably go with uh, maybe Dean Ambrose, or I would even draw a curveball and just pick Kevin Owens, because okay. I think he's the most entertaining thing going right now. And now... Wow. Your SmackDown. Now we're gonna go backwards, Nick. Um. You're basically running like you're the GM of both of them. So Kevin Owens is gone. Who's your pick for SmackDown? AJ Styles. Not bad. Sal. I I agree. I agree. AJ Styles. You pick you pick Reigns, right? I for pick Reigns. Yeah. Now I pick uh, AJ for SmackDown. Okay. Now. I'm the one. Well, actually, oh, 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 matter of fact, let me retract. I said John Cena. Okay. Actually. Now, for me, SmackDown, I'm doing a big ass curveball right now. Finn Balor. Because it's Shane. You know, he likes to shake things up. That's true. I, I, I could probably see that. He's going to call up an NXT guy as his number one pick. And they're, <laughs> I think, yeah, they're eligible, so it, it can happen. Yeah, that probably would be a smart way to draw instant attention to SmackDown. I just wonder how big of the ratings are going to be. Um, I hope they're probably banking on maybe average to a little bit higher than average ratings for this live SmackDown. But you know, who's gonna, who's to know? You know, if it's going to go to same length as Raw? Because if we if we remember correctly, um, the Go Home show before Money in the Bank got a 2.5, I think. Yeah, I mean the uh, other few um, uh, Raws after that, I think they did pretty okay. Uh, I think they did it by hours. So certain hours it was pretty bad, certain hours it was pretty good, and they keep switching it up. That's usually but, how it goes, though. Yeah, I mean, um, but like, uh, but knowing Vince, knowing the uh, you know his mindset on the investors, the people behind everything of the company, they're looking to get beyond this. They want to they want to go soar beyond this. They want to go. Five million people or more every single week. They're they're keeping the expectations high. I mean, also you gotta think of the fact that uh, there there's gonna be more and more um, you know uh, stuff happening. You know, as time goes on, we'll find out later on. I mean, um, I think we're all we can all say that we're all excited for this whole thing. I mean, oh, definitely, SmackDown, we all are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, SmackDown is being live. I mean, it brings me back to those days of ruthless aggression where we're watching like it was back. It brings me back to when I was a kid watching Raw. As, I mean, watching SmackDown, Friday night, you know, anything can happen, anytime, no spoilers. You see it, and it's kind of organic, you know? So that's, that's going to be kind of That's good, though, that there's no more spoilers. That's amazing. That's a, well, yeah, that's a big... Yeah, that's, that's a that's gonna, thing. Yeah, it's going to be a, a big thing. Um, when SmackDown was on Friday nights, it did feel like a death show, though. But really I think did. the key, again, is, is trying to create the... Um, the feeling that SmackDown is a show where anything can happen... Um, It'll work for Nitro. It worked for Raw. You, you gotta give you gotta give SmackDown some time to shake that connotation of it being a B show. And I think this is a really good step towards making it feel like a must see program. And, uh, Which honestly, I think it will be. Yeah, you can only do one thing, and that's watch and see what happens. And then 
and then angrily comment on Facebook. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Facebook, um, Twitter, whatever you want. Yeah, we'll just start complaining about how we're not going to watch uh, WWE and then end up watching Raw the next night or next week or whatever. But I mean, nonetheless, we're all hyped. We're all excited. Uh, I know what you. I know what we're doing on Monday and Tuesdays now. You know, and Wednesdays. Think, Wednesdays. Oh, and Thursdays. And uh, hopefully Fridays there will be something that's going to pop up, but we'll see. But this no, is. A, I think Friday might be like the relaxed day. Or if TNA decides to do something, you know. But oh no, I'm, they're moving to Thursdays. Well, we'll see. I mean, they always change up their schedule every uh, time WWE does something. But I mean, nonetheless, I know Nick, you're pretty stacked because you're going to be covering four days, four days worth of uh, wrestling programming on certain uh, seasons yeah, for I the think, fall and summer. I think this will benefit Nick though because now it's four days in a row, so he has Friday, Saturday, Sunday yeah. to catch up. Yeah, sort of, sort of, but it, it's kind of just staying the same. Only Impact and SmackDown are switching places, and Lucha Underground is ending because the season is over. <laughs> yep, but um, I mean, we'll see from there, but. Again, you can check out PWO, Pro Wrestling Opinion, for all your wrestling news, articles, feeds. In just, case you ever missed a show, you can always watch it. Uh, you and know, just you can remember, read reading is fundamental. Reading about wrestling is everything. Nick, you should make that a catchphrase for your site. I mean, that rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I'm, th- uh, I'm, 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 think- I'm thinking about it, thinking about it. Should... I already have the tag handle of... Uh... You should copyright it. Correct. Yeah, you should copyright it, trademark it before WWE takes it and says, nope, you can't use that because, I mean, we got your back, right? We can say, I think the other uh, people that watch our programming, they have your back too. But nonetheless, be sure to check out the site. Be sure to check out our Facebook page, our YouTube page, and all the other social media we got. And also another thing, be sure to check us out on SoundCloud, actually. We have a couple of podcasts up right now on SoundCloud. You can check it out. Uh, give a listen or two. It's good for those times where, you know, you, you don't have to watch, uh, you know, let's say if you're driving or you're doing something, which we don't, um, you know, advise. You could be doing something, you could be working out, and you just pop in your headphones and you'll be listening to us talk and rant and do all these other stuff. But nonetheless, we'll see you there. Links will be posted, and we'll be sure to check, you know, be sure to check us out. So I'll see you from there. See you guys. Adios.